Hi guys, welcome to this new video. In this video, we are going to code to show real time data or live data to the user that is front end or client side. This is fundamentally different from how the previous one works. Uh, in this one, we are going to make use of Django, Django REST framework, Django channel REST framework, then Redis server, Vue.js and WebSocket. And in previous one, we used to make use of Ajax and it would send request every five seconds from the front end or the client side to the back end server. So that was quite expensive. And in today's one, what we are going to do is code in such a way so that whenever any new entry is made on the model, the server will send a message to the front end or the client and then it will display the new data. So this is part one video. And in this video, we are going to do installations and configuration of our project. So before we get started, please make sure to subscribe to our channel, like this video and share. So now let's get started. First of all, we'll start by installing the Redis server that is required. So I'm going to copy this and go to my VS code and paste it. Let me enter my password. Yes. Actually, I had already done this, so that's why it is asking me uh, to override or not. But for y'all, this won't come. Then we will do this echo. And there we go. And then I will directly do this. Uh, install Redis. Y'all can do is update it. But I'm going to directly install the Redis server. Yes. All the code link will be present in the description. So y'all can check this out. So now that ready server is installed, let's verify its installation by typing it in this command and it should say uh, status as active. Q to exit. Let me clear the screen. So our ready server is installed. Now let's create a virtual environment. So I'll call it as virtual env dot env. And then let me activate that environment. So env bin activate. Clear the screen once. Then we are going to start by installing the Django. So pip install Django then i'll install django rest framework and now we'll install the django channel rest framework so all the links will be also mentioned in the description you all can go from there and browse it And this is another thing that we need to install along with uh, Django channel rest framework. So we'll copy this as well. And I'm going to hit over here. And in this project, I'm going to make use of uh, image. So I will have to install pillow. So pip install pillow. So every uh, all the installations are done successfully. Uh, let's start by creating a project. So Django admin start project. I'll call it as SRC. Then we'll navigate inside the project and we'll create a new app. So start app and this will be demo. And now let's start configuring all this. So we'll go inside SRC again inside SRC, go to settings.py and we'll create a template directory over here. So template directory and I'll take in base directory and then templates. Let's install this in the templates. D, uh, directories and since we have created our new projects a um, new app so we need to mention it over here so demo 
along with demo since we are using django rest framework so we need to mention rest framework as well and since we are using django channel so we have to specify that as well so let me check this out yeah channels so now there is one more configuration that we have to do in settings.py so let's do that actually two configuration and now since we are going to use make use of django channel so instead of whiskey application we have to use ascii application so we have to change both of them ascii ascii and this django now comes built in with ascii application so we don't have to worry about that since there is redis server involved so we have to give that a configuration as well so that will be channel layers default backend is redis channel layer and configuration host is localhost because on this redis channel must be running by default so this everything is done now we have to go to ascii application and do one configuration we have to import few things so let's start so from channels dot routing import protocol type router and url uh, router and after this we are going to override the application so application will be protocol type router and this will be a dictionary and in this if the request type is of http then use the application and if it is of web socket then use the url router and over here we have to specify the router path so what i'll do is i'll uh, use web socket underscore url patterns so what i'm doing is uh, just like this url patterns we can uh, i will create websocket url patterns and that will be used whenever uh, whenever websocket is being used and this i'll import from routers so from my application that is from demo dot routing import web uh, this thing web uh, socket url patterns i know i haven't created this uh, routing yet but we will create it in the next pro next video so now the configuration is done let's go ahead and create a model okay i'll call it as post model so basically what uh, i'm thinking of doing is showing the list of posts this will accept models dot model it will have few fields that will be title title will be models dot care field this will be max or length of 200 and unique true then will be content this will be models dot text field i will remove this extra thing that got imported now after this status will be there status will be models dot integer integer field and i'll give it choices as status which will create soon and default will be zero then image actually image is not required so let's not use image author author will be models dot foreign key field and this will take user over here i know we have to import it we'll do it after this related name will be blog posts i will call it as and on delete let's delete it okay so models dot cascade and then we will have two more fields created at and this will be models dot date time field auto now add as true 
updated at this will be models dot date time field again and this will be auto now as true and i'll modify the string and string representation of this so this will be this will return self dot title let's create status first so status is zero means draft then one means published actually we'll call it as publish instead of published and two means archive so status is done let's import user model so that will come from from django dot contrib dot auth dot models import user. So our use post model is complete. Okay, let's create a serializer as well. Serializer dot py and I'm going to import the serializer. So from REST framework, import serializers. And from models, we are going to import the few things. So from dot models, import uh, the post model and the status. So status will be used later on, but we'll import and keep it. So I'll call it as post serializer. and this will be uh, serializer dot model serializer model serializer correct and then i'm going to do class meta this will take in model so model is post model and along with this it will take fields so fields will be all fields i want uh actually you know what let's make use of this right now itself so what i'm thinking is whenever this will uh, this serializer returns the data it will return uh, the status field as 0 1 2 i want this data to be returned instead of 0 1 2 so because of that i'm going to override the status field and i'll call it a serializers dot uh, method serializer method field okay and what does this do is i now i can write a definition for that so definition get because it is get and then whatever the field name is so status and this will take in self and object so now i'm going to make use of this status and return the draft instead of this so return status and i will get uh, what is the data that is this object dot status and i will call it as one so this object status will actually contain the status of the current object uh, that is whether it is, uh, whether the current post is in draft mode or publish mode or in archive mode and then it will fetch me the that data from this and i will return the first one that is the draft from here and also will change the author field okay so why author because author will return only the id of author and not the username so i want to return the author's username so let's do that as well object and return obj object that is that author and then username and i'll copy paste it and i'll call it as author so our serializer is also ready now let's go ahead and create the view in this video itself so we are going to create the model view set uh, for that i'll do some imports 
from rest framework import view sets then from dot models import post from dot serializers import post serializer actually i think i have misspelled this so let me correct it and also rename the file done now we'll create a class so class post view set this will take in view set dot model view set and i'm going to specify serializer class that will be post serializer and after that i'm going to specify the query set the query set will be post dot objects dot all so view set is also ready let me create a urls for this urls.py so we are going to make use of default router over here so from django actually from rest framework dot routers import default router and then i'm going to create an object of this router will be default router router dot register i'll call it as post and this will take in views dot post view set that we created in the previous file so this is base name will be post i know this is not correct let's input the views now so from dot views actually from dot import views so this is done and final thing remains that is assigning the url so it will be url patterns will be router dot urls and let's import this uh, url in this one so whenever it is blank path um, let's include demo apps urls and i have to input the include don't forget to put a comma over here so what does this mean this means that whenever there is a blank path that is index uh, include this url demos dot url so demo is the app name and urls is the file name and from here it will pick up this url patterns actually url pattern spelling is not correct so i will copy and paste it over here now it is correct so that's it guys for this video in this video we were able to complete the configuration and installations of the project and along with that we have also completed the django rest framework side of the project in the upcoming videos we will complete the django channels part of the uh, project and also the html part so please do subscribe to our channel and see you in the next one